Joe Haddo, and this is our series of interviews with the Theakston's Old Peculiar Crime Novel of the Year Award, Long Listies, and it's great to have you with us. Produced and curated by Harrogate International Festivals, in partnership with Theakston's Old Peculiar, WH Smith, and The Express. Today I'm joined by a debut author whose book, My Sister, the Serial Killer, has received a lot of attention since its publication last year. She was featured on Val McDermott's New Blood panel at Harrogate last year and is here to talk about that and her book. Oyinkin Braithwaite, hello and welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's lovely to have you with us. Uh, Where are you joining us from today? I'm joining you from Lagos, Nigeria. Fantastic. And how has lockdown (laughs) been for you? It's been hectic um, because actually before the um, before Nigeria went into full lockdown, I was self isolating because I had been traveling. So as my self isolation came to an end, the government was like, "Right, everybody's got to you know stay at home." So um, it was a bit rough, you know. They they stole away my hope as. <laughs> um, but, um, I've adjusted. I mean, I think that's the good thing about being a writer. Um, I'm used to being on my own. I'm used to being, um, I mean, I'm not on my own. I've got my family, but I'm used to being indoors. And, yeah. you know, I'm not the most social person on a good day. So it's been no way. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of, a lot of authors have said, you know, isolation is what we do for a job. So it's been fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been able to work. You know, there's a lot to be grateful for because I know that there are, you know, there are a lot of people in this period who have not been able to work. I mean, some people have managed to work from home, but there's so many jobs where working from home isn't an option. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I can't really complain too much. No, exactly. Uh, well, we must talk about your book and congratulations on being longlisted for this award. Thank um, you. <laughs> and the book is My Sister, the Serial Killer, which many people watching will probably have read already. Um, I wanted to ask if you had a genre in mind when you started writing the book, because obviously this is in the crime novel of the year long list. But did you see it as a crime novel when you started writing it? No, I did not. Um you know, and having it classed as a crime novel has been such an interesting experience. You know, I've been able to go for festivals, you know, a lot of them that I didn't even know about. Um, and the crime, I feel like the crime genre and the crime readership are such an interesting group of people. Harrogate, I went to Harrogate for, my, um, for the first time last year. And, um, you know... Um, I mean, I, I watched panels. I was also part of panels and just, the, I loved, it's the only festival I've been to that um, the author would, you know, talk about their book or uh, give us a short uh, synopsis of their book and the audience would go, ooh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that before. And I haven't seen that since um, it was epic. So, you know, I've enjoyed being a part of the crime genre, um, but writing it, you know, I wasn't thinking about genre at all. And, um, you know, if you've read My Sister's Serial Killer, you know that, you know, it's not a whodunit. um, And, you know, there's not that, it doesn't follow that path necessarily of trying to catch um, the killer or trying to figure out who the killer is. So if I had thought about it, I, you know, but I also kind of do understand you've got, a, you've got a number of dead bodies um, going on. There's definitely a crime taking place. So um, several crimes taking place. So yeah, but it wasn't on my mind as I was writing it. And I was so pleased that you enjoyed Harrogate last year and had such a good time. And uh, hopefully when, you know, we're able to get back together and gather and, and Harrogate can happen again, uh, you'll be yeah. there with us and we can, we can do it all again because it really is quite a special place, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, for those that haven't read the book yet, um, who might have heard of it, could you just tell us the premise and a little bit about your two lead characters? With, are you going to supply me with the oohs and the ahs? I can do that. Hold on. I'll get, I'll get ready. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see if I can get my timing right. Okay. okay. All right. So it's, so it's about um, 
two sisters. Um, the older sister is Corridae. She's the protagonist of the story. She's uptight. Um, you know, uh, she's meticulous. She's hardworking. And then you've got the younger sister, Ayala, who's beautiful and charming and fickle and who also happens to be a serial killer. Um, so Ooh. at the start of the story... <laughs> That. At the start of the story, um, you know, we realize that uh, Ayala has gotten rid of her third boyfriend, has killed her third boyfriend. And every time she kills a boyfriend, um, she calls her older sister to come and help her clean up. Um, but now that they're onto the third body, the older sister is starting to, you know, she's, she's, she's starting to come to the terms with the fact that there's something very wrong with her sister. And um, things kind of come to a head when her younger sister starts to date the man that she loves. Yes, indeed. Ah, I should say. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I mistimed the last one there. Um, yeah, yeah. But I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can see how the Harrogate audience would have reacted to you describing that on stage, though. And for anyone who yeah. hasn't read it, um, you know, it's, it's a superb read. And... Um, I really loved it. I, I read it quite a while ago now when it was, it was first published um, over here in the UK. Um, and what I remember thinking at the time was that the, sh the chapters are really quite short and, and, and very sort of snappy. And they almost read like mini stories themselves. And I just wondered if that was how you'd planned it when you wrote it. Um, I mean, I'm not really great at planning when it comes to writing, but what happened with this particular story was was, you know, um, I was writing it chapter by chapter and I would write at the start, before I wrote out the chapter, I put a heading just mm. to root myself so that I remembered what, because again, I don't plan. So sometimes I can get, you know, you kind of realize that where you started, you're off somewhere else. So the title was there to root me to that chapter and um, so I think that's what happened because I was mindful of the title. So I needed to make, you know, keep that title in mind throughout that chapter as opposed to worrying about the, the bigger picture. Mm. Um, so that's how that happened. And the funny thing is that when it came, when we were editing the book, um, once we were done with the editing, I was like, you know, I sent a message to my um, editors. I was like, right, you guys can, you know, uh, remove all the chapter headings now. And they were like, no, because I had done it for my benefit. I never thought that it would, um, you know, end up in the finished um, <laughs> products. Um, but they were like, no, no, we like you like that. It's fine. So that's how that happened. <laughs> um I just want to talk about the awards very briefly, and you're on a, a long list of 18 uh, fabulous books. Um, are there some authors on there that you've read before and, and possibly some books that you've read, and do you have a favourite from the list? I mean, I'm a fan of Lee Child, um, who, you know, I've kind of... I've got books of his in my room. Um, I mean, I read crime myself, so I'm a fan of Lee Child. I'm a fan of Val, who I've who I've met and I think she's so lovely um, and she makes me laugh. So <laughs> I was excited to be on a list with her. Um, I've, I've started reading, I think I'm like halfway through platform seven, which yeah. um, I was really, really enjoying. Um, but I got that, I think I got the book before it came out and I just, things got crazy. Um, and I've also met um, um, Adrian, the author of um, The Chain, who, again, like, he cracks me up so hard. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be on a list with him. Um, it's a great list, isn't it? And, you know, congratulations again. How, Thank how, you. how did it feel when you heard that you had been longlisted for the biggest award in crime fiction? Um, you know what? I didn't see it coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> at this juncture, like, you know, I, everything is a blessing to me. I didn't, everything that's happened with this book, I didn't see coming, um, to be honest, least of all this. And to, it wasn't even in the purview of my mind because I went to Harrogate last year and so much has happened for all of us in this period. So when it came, it was like a beam of good news. I don't know how else to like, it was just, you know, it, it made me feel really happy and, and it was, it um, uplifted me a bit in this period. I suppose actually getting news such as this at a time when we're all feeling a bit 
you know, a little bit vulnerable, yeah. perhaps, and yeah. we, you know, yeah. in need of uh, some hugs. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's probably probably the perfect time to learn it, wasn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, I, like one hundred percent. You know, it just it just reminds you that things are not things are still happening, things are still moving, things are not hopeless, you yeah. know. Um, so, you know, whether I get onto the shortlist or the, the you know, or, or whatever, like, um, it's just an honor to be, to have been considered and remembered and chosen. I remember reading that you are interested in how society responds and, and reacts with, with beauty and, and, and beautiful people. Um, and I just wondered if that was one of the inspirations for this book yeah no definitely I mean it's why it was important to me because I could have done the story a little bit differently where one sister is maybe just a little bit more attractive or you know but it was important to me that there was this massive difference in the way that they looked you know because in many respects they are opposites um you know one is light one is dark one is you know slim one is more curvy um you know, it mattered to me, but also it mattered to me the difference in the responses that they got from people around them and how it affected their psyche and how it affected their behavior. Because aside from, you know, the abuse that they, they've, they both suffered, there's also the fact that how people treated them has shaped them, has shaped the way that, you know, the expectations they have, the confidence they have, um, you know, and I think that's true to life. Um, you know, if you're told that you're beautiful from you know, age three onwards, you carry yourself a different way. Um, mm. So, yeah. Yeah. And it is, it, it's, it's, it's almost a separate conversation we could have about looking at that cultural significance, you know, of, of, be, of, of two people who perhaps have been told from an early age and believe that they are beautiful and someone that hasn't. But that's, we'll say that for another time. But I just thought that was so interesting um, in the way that you approached it. And, and it is something that I got from, from the book as well. Yeah. Um, just before we, we go, uh, I just wanted to, to ask, as I'm asking everyone, you know, what does it, what does the Theakst and Old Peculiar Crime Novel of the Year Award mean to you as someone who's a, a newish author or s- certainly newly published author to be on, on this list? And I know you've been on other lists as well for many prizes over the last year, but what does it mean to you, this one? Um, well, just generally, I think Harrogate has been very kind to me. Um, I was on the new blood panel when I um, when I was there um, last year. Um, so you know, and I was treated so warmly when I went to Harrogate. And I guess I'd seen this. I wasn't even like my mind wasn't on the award. So you know, it felt like a, like what you said earlier, like a hug um, <laughs> from a you know um, from this festival that has has been so kind to me so early on in my career. Um, so. I don't know. I, I I don't know how to coin it into one sentence, but I'm I'm just really grateful. Uh, and the book that we are talking about is My Sister, the Serial Killer. Uh, it's published by Atlantic, and a reminder that you get to vote for our shortlist and the books that you would like to see on it. So uh, if you'd like to vote for My Sister, the Serial Killer, and see it on there, the voting is open now, and you can purchase the book from WH Smith if you haven't read it already, uh, just to find out what we're talking about, and you won't be disappointed. And you could vote by going to Harrogate Theakston Crime Award dot com uh it's been so lovely talking to you and i'm sorry we don't have longer <laughs> uh, but i'm sure we will meet at harrogate uh in in the not too distant future i hope thank you um, what one thing to ask before i uh before i let you go um obviously there's been an awful lot of attention on this book and i know from talking to other authors who've had a a similar situation with a debut novel, it can be sometimes a little bit overwhelming if you're trying to also write the next book. Has that been the the case for you? Um, I think there was a point in 2019, like the middle of 2019, where I kind of was having anxiety attacks um, constantly. And, you know, I thought, what are people going to, what are they going to expect from me? Um, But eventually I had to, um, I had to remind myself that when I was writing my sister, the serial killer, I didn't think it was going to get the attention that it got. And there was really no way to predict how anybody 
um, would receive your work. And, you know, the important thing was to stay true to myself and to what I, I wanted to do and wanted to push out. And if the next book bombs, then we have to just work on the third one. <laughs> like, I can't, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do anything about that. Um, yeah. Well, one thing we've learned from this current pandemic is uh, things are out of your control aren't they so yes, you know this is true. you just you just write <laughs> the book that you want to write and let it let it do its thing <laughs> yeah. oinkin it's been great talking to you thank you very much a pleasure thank you yes. bye